Hey guys, Paul here from FamilyWheels.ca with another car review for your growing family. And this week, Roger and I are off to a birthday party in style in the 2016 North American Car of the Year. Auto journalists from across Canada and the United States have joined together and voted this as the best vehicle you can buy for 2016, the new, completely redesigned Honda Civic. And you know what? I've got the touring edition here today. Let's not miss words. This car is amazing. At just about $27,000, it is so well kitted out. And with the new one and a half liter turbo, a lot of fun to drive as well. I'm gonna put it through all of our standardized tests. We'll talk about build quality, where it's made, see what it's like for family living as well coming up. So stick around. So if we rewind here for a minute back to the mid-1970s, it's when the Civic was first released in North America. And it's actually the first ever car that my mom had just for herself. And I asked her the other day what she thought of it. And she remembered that it was a fairly sporty little car, sportier than she expected, but pretty tiny. And if we fast forward to this 10th generation Civic, certainly not the tiny car that it used to be. It's larger, wider, longer than ever. And in fact, I think that it would give old Honda Accords from years gone by. It's much larger sedan, a run for its money in terms of size. It's amazing to see what's considered to be a compact sedan these days. But if we also look at the uh, base model of the Civic and what's now available to you as standard on a car like this, you certainly wouldn't have gotten features like this back in the day either. So we're talking things like uh, Bluetooth connectivity, a rear backup camera, LED running lights, LED tail lights, cruise control, air conditioning, power windows, all for a price tag starting at about $16,000. Not bad at all for a car like this that's made in Ontario or Indiana, respectively, if you're in the States. Once you start climbing up, in price in the Civic, I think that it gets even more impressive. So we're in the uh, touring trim today of the Civic and that's the top of the line. You know, I've been complaining over the last couple of years here about Toyota and Honda really not keeping up with the Mazdas and Kias and Hyundais of the world in terms of what you get for your dollar. But this new Civic, this touring trim, holy cow, this could be the best ever bang for your buck that I've ever seen in a car, full stop. 27 grand and you're getting pretty much anything that you want in a car. You're getting amazing safety features, lane keeping assist technology that will, you know, kind of steer the car for you a little bit, keep you in the lines of the road as you're driving along. You're getting adaptive cruise control. You're getting this little camera that's in the side mirror here that will flash up what's in your blind spot in the right mirror whenever you turn on your turn indicator. And brake collision mitigation software built into this vehicle. And that's what gives the uh, Civic, by the way, a top safety pick plus rating from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. You've got super comfortable leather seats, which are heated, by the way, not just in the front row, but in the second row. And we've also got some really clever infotainment system technology here, including software that will mirror your smartphone's screen and pop it right up here on the infotainment system. So if you wanted to use the navigation on your in-phone uh, navigation system, you can do that or you could read an email whatever you can do that right here on the infotainment system it also looks really good regardless of the trim that you're gonna get I'm finding that the interior on this uh, vehicle just looks way better now we have much cleaner lines on the interior the hard plastics are gone and from the outside much more aggressive and muscular and sleek and just cool looks but how does this car drive compared with those cooler, sleeker looks? Well, you can get the base model Civics in a two liter four cylinder engine. And if we look at the upper level trims, the top two trims of the Civic, we now for the first time ever have a one and a half liter turbo on board. I've been zipping around in this car for the better part of a week now and find that it's really pretty fun to get around in, aside from its turbo lag right off the line. So let me come to a stop here and show you what I'm talking about. If we come to a dead stop and really want to give it the beans right off the line, 
there it goes. It just takes a minute, but then it's really responsive and eager. In fact, one of the beefs that I have with this car is the fact that the continuously variable transmission, which is fairly smooth, by the way, in this touring package, just doesn't come with a set of paddle shifters on the steering wheel because it is such a fun little car. It'd be nice to be able to shift down a little bit and play around in the corners a little bit more. And speaking of zipping around corners. The suspension has been completely redesigned for 2016 as well. You're gonna ride a little bit slower than you did in the previous version of this car. It rides smooth, but it also doesn't bob on you when you're going through the corners. This is not the bland old Civic that we had a couple of years ago. But I was curious to see if this improvement in performance would affect fuel efficiency with the new Civic. And in fact, Honda is saying that the uh, turbocharged one and a half liter engine should see better fuel efficiency than the uh, non-turbo two liter engine that you get in the uh, lower end. Civics. But you know, to be honest with you, I'm not seeing the numbers that Honda's projecting. It's saying that you should see about five and a half to uh, seven and a half liters per hundred kilometers with this turbocharged one and a half liter. By the way, that's around 43 to 31 miles a gallon but I'm just not seeing that. I've got about eight liters per 100 kilometers as my average this week. And that's, you know, sure, me giving it the beans from time to time, but I haven't been driving it that hard. But when that turbo spools up, every time that happens, that's obviously gonna drop your fuel economy. And that's what I've been seeing here this week. On the plus side though, a lot of times when you get a turbo, you do have to put premium fuel into it. Not the case here in the Civic. It'll take any old octane and be just fine. I am being a little bit nitpicky here just because this is such a good car, but there are a couple of other little beefs of mine in the interior. First up, the fact that there's no lumbar support, so you don't have that bar here anymore that allows you to adjust just how much support there is in the lower back. I'd like to see that. And the buttons here on the steering wheel just feel a little bit cheap and chintzy in my mind. It'd be nice if they were just a little bit more solid feeling. But when we come to the interior refinement on this vehicle, huge leaps and bounds on the new Civic. Here in the back seat, meanwhile, you can see that it's a little bit tight for me. I've just got a little bit of extra headroom and a tinny bit of leg room um, at six foot two. I've adjusted the driver's seat, by the way, for a tall driver like myself as well. So if you've got shorter people up front, it's not gonna be nearly as cramped back here. But for preteen kids, for kids in booster seats, child seats, we've got our rear facing child seat in here, by the way, you can see it's not a problem. Lots of leg room back here and a surprisingly spacious second row. Now looking at the trunk test again this vehicle's gotten a little bit bigger and it means the trunk also going to be a little bit bigger for you uh, and it's not bad we've got our standard amount of gear here a couple bags of groceries a diaper bag a fold-up stroller a soccer ball and a backpack and we've got a little bit of room to spare but this is what really surprised me you can see you can pull down the seats right here by pulling this tab and the 60-40 split rear seats will fold forward. I had to go and do a little bit of a lumber run at the local hardware store earlier this week. We didn't have our Volvo around because Devin was off driving in it. So I took this and I didn't quite know how it would go but I folded down those seats and believe it or not, I was actually able to fit 10 foot lengths of one by sixes through here, through the front seats and kind of, you know, uh, snake them through there. And pretty impressive for a vehicle of this size to be able to carry around 10 foot lumber. Now, as I was saying, we've got a rear facing child seat in place. So what's that gonna do for leg room? Let's check it out. We've got, and again, a surprise to me about um, 11 and a half, 12 inches of legroom here. That's pretty impressive. I mean, we're talking about uh, vehicles like much larger SUVs not having that amount of legroom up in the front seat when a rear facing child seat is in place. And you can see here, even with that child seat in place, I'm totally comfortable up here as a passenger. Lots of legroom, that's a really good sign for the Civic. Finally, if you do decide to go with the leather option here in the touring trim, you can see that we've got a sort of a mix Mixed medium here of leather. We kind of got this almost sort of carbon fiber type look. And then of course, these challenging seats, I've talked about them before, covered with hundreds of tiny perforations. It gives you that sporty look, but let's spill some yogurt on it and see what happens. Gonna get the rag going. And you can see, as usual, 
all those tiny holes and perforations fill with whatever the spill is makes it hard to clean. So just make sure that you know that going into the leather seats. And if you do get them, make sure that you uh, cover up those back seats from your kids so they don't get spills all over them because these are tricky to clean and now I'm going to have to clean them up. So if you're a regular viewer of the show, you'll know by now that I'm not the hugest fan of sedans. Um, in a lot of ways, I just prefer station wagons because, you know, if you've got a family and you've got, you know, a dog or hockey bags or a chariot that you take your kid out running in or whatever, like all that gear is going to take up a lot of space and max out a sedan fairly quickly. Station wagon is just going to give you that much more cargo capacity. And in fact, the Civic used to be sold as a station wagon variant. So you could buy it as a station wagon as well as a little hatchback. And holy cow, if this still came as a station wagon, I would pick one up tomorrow because it's such a good car. So if you don't mind giving up that bit of cargo capability, you know, when it comes to dollar value, what you get for your dollar, when it comes to the looks, both interior and exterior, the performance, the uh, resale value. I mean, this is the top selling car in Canada for the last 18 years running. So you know that it's going to have great resale value and it's only going to get better. It's got that top safety pick plus rating from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. So you know it's going to be safe for your family. Just so many check boxes marked off here with this car. In fact, this touring version is so good at $27,000 that if you're thinking of going and you know shopping around for an Acura or a Lexus or a higher end vehicle, seriously go and take this touring trim out for a test drive and see what you think because you could wind up being just as happy in this car and saving yourself thousands of dollars. By the way, next week on the program, I'm taking out the uh, new Honda Accord sedan, the slightly larger version uh, of Honda's sedan line. And I'm really curious to see how that one stacks up to this field because I got so much going for it in terms of value, comfort, and resale. So let me know what you think. Are you as big of a fan of this new Civic as I am? You can leave a comment below. You can always find me on Twitter as well, at Family Wheels or uh, check us out on the website familywheels.ca and I'm going to see you back in that Honda Accord in about seven days from now so make sure to check back in.